Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Joyce. I live in Canada. And uh, guys, in case you're new to my channel, you're most welcome. For those who are returning to watch my videos, I truly appreciate. Uh, in case you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe. Remember to always like my videos and leave a comment and a question. And then in case I'm able to respond, in case I am in a position to answer you, then I'll try my best. So in this channel, I'm always giving information uh, based on my own experience, sometimes based on my research. Yeah. And I also share my lifestyle in Canada. So the information I'm giving you is not, um, uh, is, is, is not based on legal advice in case you need any information uh, about, uh, you know, concerning legal advice. There is always uh, the IRCC that you can consult for, you know, for clarifications and for further information. So uh, today I just thought about the people who are coming to Canada as international students because I know we have been talking about coming to Canada through other platforms and I just thought we might have forgotten that we have people who are coming to study in Canada. I know there are so many people that have applied, that have applied to meet the deadline for end of April so that they can join universities and colleges in Canada for September intake. So this video for today is um, just some tips for you in your preparation during your application for universities and also, um, you know, for you, for you uh, as you live here in Canada, there are some tips that you need to know for students who are, interna who are international students. Yeah, so uh, this video is for you and also for the parents. I know you have, we have parents who are following me and they would like to bring their, to send their, their kids to come and study in Canada. Also, I, we always say that you can always support even your relatives, your nieces, your, your nephews to come and study in Canada. So this video is for everyone that is following me. Yeah. So, uh, and my concern is when you're making choices to come and study in Canada, what are you going to consider before you even choose the, you know, the right university and the right uh, colleges to come and, and, and study in? Uh, and my question today, I, I want to throw it to you uh, and ask you what, uh, I mean, do you prefer to come and study uh, for one year program? in a college or, or is it favorable or encouraged for you to come and study in a university uh, in a university in a university institution and do a, a three or four year program what is better for an international student and i know what crosses your mind immediately is the finances for many people i, I am not talking for everybody but i'm saying at least for the majority it is about finances because of course, the, the, the more the years that you want to spend in, in universities, the more the money that you're required to pay as an international student. Remember, as an international student in Canada, you pay more than three times compared to a Canadian student, a Canadian student or a permanent resident child or student. So considering that and many other factors, you may think that taking a one year program to come and study in a college may save your money. But, but today I want us to look at what, is the, what are the consequences after you study, uh, uh, after you study this one year program compared to somebody who came as an international student and did a four year or a three year program. And then we are going to weigh those two options and see what is advisable for you as an international student. Yeah, so remember when you come as an international student, you, you're living under, under some rules governed by the, of course, by the government of Canada. And one of them to, to be an international student is that you can only work for 20 hours per week. So you have to be very keen that you are not going to work more than 20 hours per week. 
okay so in that case it means that you can never find a full time job because for you for it to be called a full time job it has to be at least 30 hours per week so when you're working as an international student uh it is 20 hours per week in case you in case you work for more than 21 uh, more than 20 hours per week then it's going to compromise with your um, application for permanent resident at the end. I know it's, it's not everybody that comes to Canada that want to, to remain in Canada after your studies, but I know the majority of people would want to remain in Canada and get your permanent resident and finally your citizenship and work and maybe raise your family in Canada. So this video is for those people that want to remain in Canada after your studies. But guys, remember when you are applying for your student visa to come and study in Canada, you never you have to prove enough reasons to the embassy that you, you have you have to prove to them that you have enough enough reasons for you to go back to your home country. So you are not going to tell the embassy that I'm applying to go and study in Canada and then and then stay there and get permanent resident. In case you say that, then you mess the whole thing. You always have to prove and have serious proof that you, after your university, then you will need to go back to your home country. So uh, in that case, uh, you, have to, you also have to be a full-time student. You cannot come as an international student and be a part-time student because if you do that, and again, you want to apply for your permanent resident after you are edu your, your program, then it is going to compromise because they want you to have been a full-time uh, uh, student, not part-time. Yeah, then uh, for you, now you, you, you need to start thinking what is going to happen after I graduate. And for you to, to think what is going to happen is that you, what, that is why I always encourage even the students to watch my videos when I'm talking about pathways for coming to Canada and how you can get permanent resident for each province in Canada. So that even as you apply to universities to come and study here, you know at least in this province it suits it suits international students because as you as you have heard me talk in my previous videos, you notice that some provinces are highly uh, um, value international students and they have a, a stream or a program that they invite international students into their provincial nominations. So you need to look at those provinces. Consider the province where you're going to study. Some provinces are easier to get permanent resident than others. Remember we said, that they say that the easiest to get permanent resident in Canada is Nova Scotia. I don't know whether it has changed. I just saw that when I was doing my research, Nova Scotia is one of the provinces where it is very easy for you to get uh, to get your permanent resident once you have graduated as an international student. Something else to consider, do I need to study another language apart from English? Do I need to do French? Because remember, uh, Canada is a bilingual country. English and um, English and French are the, the main languages that are, that, that are used in Canada. So, and we realize that when you have when you'll have proficiency in both English and French, then you stand a higher chance for you to get your permanent resident at the end. So even as you're coming to study in your university, in your college, always work on, on instead of wasting your free time, always work on doing some studies in French. You can always have a nap that I said there's a nap called Duolingo. Duolingo is a nap that you can always use to study French, even when you're doing your your studies so that at the end when you're challenging your um, IELTS for English you can always challenge the, the French one remember when you have both languages tested then you, you even stand a, a, even a more higher chance uh, a higher chance for uh, you know for being selected into getting permanent resident okay so something else that you need to consider for you to because you are looking what is going to happen after I graduate. Because after graduation, you are supposed to get something called postgraduate work permit. And for you to get this postgraduate work permit, you must have 
met several factors that I'm, I'm going to give you right now. The first one is that you must have had a valid study permit. That one is definitely, there's no way you're going to study in Canada without a valid study permit. That is something they are going to look at. They are going to look at whether you worked for more than 20 hours per week in all the time that you are doing your studies, 20 hours per week. Then they're also going to look whether you completed your studies that you came to study in Canada. I know that there are those people that come to study in the universities and then once they realize that the university has become too expensive for them, because remember you only have 20 hours to work as an international student, and sometimes the, the tuition fee can be too much for an international student. So what some people do is that uh, they quit the university that they came to study and then they look for a cheaper college once they land in Canada. And I told you in a previous video that in case you do that and you came under an agency like Interstaff, Inter not Interstaff, UNICEF International. UNICEF International, I told you, is an organization that does your application for free, that gets you a, a university in Canada, does your application, and even does your visa application for free. It is because they are hired by Canadian University or, or Australia or USA, USA to do the, uh, you know, to get them international students. So what happens is that if the university realize that you have, you have dropped from their university, they, they now contact the UNICEF and tell them, you give us a student and then now she has, the, the student has dropped from our university. And what happens in most cases is that this university can report you to the IRCC, which is the official immigration, uh, immigration uh, 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 board for Canada. And then you can find yourself being deported, which can be very embarrassing and can put you in a very bad shape. So make sure that if you're doing such a thing, you know what you're doing because you can find yourself, you can end up in trouble. It is important that the, the university that you select, you come and stick by that to the end. In case you decide to quit in the middle, then you will be knowing what you're doing. But just know that nowadays they are very strict. They can always deport you. The other thing they are going to look at, uh, whether you worked off college, okay, and uh, without a permit. Because uh, I, I said that the, the hours that they allow you to work is only 20 hours. Sometimes it can be very tempting and then you start looking for other jobs. And then you find that you're working for more than 20 hours per week. In case they find out that you did that and they have a way of finding out, then you may end up tampering with your um, application for permanent resident. So in case they realize that you meet all those factors now, at the end, they are going to give you a postgraduate work permit. The postgraduate work permit that they give you, uh, if you came to Canada and studied a one-year program in a college or in a university, you can only get one-year postgraduate work permit. That is very important. That is where actually my point is going. The, if you studies, if you studied one-year program in a university or a college, they can only give you a one-year postgraduate work permit. And what does, what does that mean? That one puts you in a very, very awkward position because remember for you to apply for permanent resident as an international student, they want you to have studied for two years in Canada. And then after you study for two years full time as a full full time student, then on the uh, then you you when when you study for two years, you will always get at least two to three years postgraduate work permit. Then in those two to three years, you have a chance of applying for permanent resident. So what happens is that they insist they advise that after you work for the first one year, then you can you can start applying for for permanent resident in the middle of the second year so that you will have proved that you have uh, that you have enough experience after study which is at least one and a half years and then uh, in the middle of the second year now you start applying for permanent resident 
So what happens in case you come to Canada and, and study for only one year program? I know there are people that have done that. I know that I have a friend that did that and, and she got a permanent resident, luckily, but she was panicking all the time. So what she did is that after that one year study, study permit, she, she was given a one year uh, a, a one year postgraduate work permit. Lucky for her, she, she got a job that, uh, that it was in skills under, it was under NOC skills, which was in demand in Ontario. So lucky enough when Ontario was doing their provincial nominations, she, she managed to go through the permanent resident application. But what happens, she did have enough time to wait for the application for, for invitation to apply for permanent resident because this one year is too short. So she was almost, one year was almost elapsing and she didn't know what to do. So what she did is that she applied for a visitor's visa, which, which she was not even sure that she would get. But luckily she got a visitor's visa. And then in those six, because a visitor's visa you can only get for six months. So in those six months, then she was able to, to buy time and wait for, because she had already started her permanent resident application for express entry. So in those six months, at least she was able to receive her invitation to apply. And then she, she, she went through the process for permanent resident. But during those six months that she got a, a visitor's visa, she was not able to work because remember as a visitor in Canada, you cannot work, you cannot study. You are only staying here idle like that. You are paying bills. Remember Canada, we have very many bills. You're paying your bills. Of course you have to eat. There's nobody who's going to feed you for free and all that. You have to meet all your basic needs. So she was in really panic mode. I, I wouldn't want anybody else to go through that. And it's out of that high experience that I said I can I can advise somebody that you don't take you, you don't take chances for life. <laughs> it's not worth it to take chances for, for life. It's good to be real. Instead of taking one year program that is going to put you under pressure too much pressure, which sometimes is unnecessary because you, you could have um, looked at it differently. I see some nurses that come to study in Canada. I have friends that have studied at uh, Niagara College. Uh, they come to Niagara College and they take a one-year program for palliative nursing. And then what they do is that the second year, instead of, instead of Get, uh, applying for postgraduate work permit after that one year, what they do is that they apply for another extension of the study permit. So once they get the ex ex extension of the study permit for another one year, the next year they do maybe personal support worker, which is in high demand in Canada. To take the one I told you is about to take care of the elderly and the and the sick and the and the you know, and the less disabled people. So you, you, you can do that. You can, take, you can take two years program, you know, different from each other, so that at least once you do that now, you will have an advantage of getting a postgraduate work permit for, for two years to three years. And now during that time, you will apply for your permanent resident without too much pressure. Make sure that the courses that you're coming to study are in demand for that province where you're coming to study. You can never go wrong with healthcare, pro, uh, healthcare programs like the personal support worker. Even if you do the first one year, something like uh, something which is not in the healthcare uh, department, you can always choose or decide to do a, a program in healthcare for the for the other year so that you increase your chances of of uh, f f getting a job of course getting a job will be very easily and also remember most of the most of these provinces are going are always having the N NOC code which is for healthcare so there is no way you are, you are you are going to miss in case you did a, a personal support work program for one year 
there's no way you you will ever miss out on on a job or even on NOC codes for that province because that is a program that is always in demand in most of the provinces. Not all the provinces. Here I'm just trying to give you an example on wh how to pick your, your programs. Make sure that you look at what that province uh, considers to be, uh, you know, skills in demand so that then when you're doing your course, you make sure that you choose to study one of the courses that after you graduate, those skills are in high demand for that province. I hope I make sense. So uh, then that now you're going to look at the, remember we are looking at the future. We said that you don't only look at now. Look at the future. What is going to happen after the postgraduate work permit? Start preparing for your IELTS and for your French test as early as you can. So that in case you don't attain a good, a good band, then you can you always have a chance to repeat. And at least I know when you're in Canada, you can always afford to pay again and retest. So that you don't rush the last minute and then you find that you're getting a five. And then you don't have enough time to receipt. So that is why I'm saying because IELTS always have an expiry of uh, two years. So make sure that you do it quite early. Immediately you land in Canada, do the first one and challenge yourself. Of course, you will have studied. You don't do, do it, don't do it before you study. Study well, then do it. So that you have at least two, two tests results that you have. So that in case now the first one you get a five or a six, you make sure that the second one you get a nine. When you have a nine in the house, you know, in your stock, then you are very sure that you are almost certain that during your PR application, you are going to score very high. Because remember, we, we have seen that language proficiency is, is like everything in Canada. It's giving you so much points. Language proficiency is one of the things that is giving you points. Knowing somebody in Canada, make sure that you, you, you make good contacts with people when you come to Canada. Don't be a person who doesn't like interacting with people. These people are the ones that are going to sign for you whenever you want to prove that you know somebody, a friend, because like a, a, like a, a province like Manitoba, they just want you to prove that you have a friend in that province. Hmm? Make sure that you have good contacts. Make sure that all these factors that they look at, you meet them. Start looking at that. The province where you come to study. Don't just come to study and stay idle and just think about, uh, about the, the books and all that. And then you forget that at the end of the studies, you will need to, to apply for permanent resident. Study that province. Let it be in your fingertips that this province requires me to to have this and this and this and this. And then by the time now you are applying, you have everything at hand. That is very important. And then after that, of course, uh, remember that this postgraduate work permit is only issued once in your lifetime. That is very serious. It means that when you come to Canada as an international student, you can never chance to get a postgraduate work permit twice. You only get it once in a lifetime. In case you don't utilize it well, then unfortunately you'll have to go back to your home country. Something else about finances. Start thinking about finances way even before you graduate. Remember you're going to, to, to need money to do your application. Remember as you have heard me talk about provisional nominations. In each one of them, there is always an application, an application uh, cost implication. Make sure that you, you, I always encourage the international students that in your account, your account should never be having less than 2000 balance in savings. I know you're going to say it is very hard, but I, you always have money to send back home. Before you start sending money home, even if they are going hungry, make sure that you have at least a balance of 2000 between 2000 and 3000 So that in case you, you get to a point of doing your applications, in case you need to receipt your English test or your, you need to add your, your French test, you will not have problems with money. In case you will need to do the applications for provinces, in case you want to try like three different provinces, you can afford comfortably, you have saved enough money. And even if the worst, if the worst happen, if the worst of worst happen and you have to go back home, you have at least money enough to pay for your ticket. 
if the worst, you know, it's always good to, to think, what if the worst happened? Canada is not heaven. Anything can happen. It's always good that you leave your doors open, that if the worst happened, you can always go back home. So do you have enough money for your ticket to go back home? As an international student, you cannot come here and start working with the Canadian citizen kids and permanent resident and forget that you are an international student. You have a big role to play. Okay? I'm just talking to you as a mother. I'm not too harsh. So, yeah, those are the things that you need to consider when you, when you are an international student. Okay? It is possible. It is, it is very possible. It is doable, but you just need to be smarter. Okay? Uh, start calculating your CRS score. That is the, what I was telling you about looking at the provinces. Start calculating your CRS score. I, I have a video that I did. Do I have a video that I did about C, how you can? Yes, I did a, a video on CRS score. And even if you don't find it, you can always uh, go under IRCC and, 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 and pick that uh, CRS score calculator. And, and you don't have to literally do it, but you can, you can assume because it's free. It's there on the website. It's always there in the internet. And there's nowhere you're filling your name. So nobody is knowing that you're doing it. Play with that thing all the time. Today, wake up and look at it and, and put your age, your name. Are you married? When you reach at, are you married? Start thinking what, what if, if you are dating somebody in Canada at that point, then think what you can do to improve your point on, are you married? Is it time to take this relationship to the next level? I'm not forcing people to get married, but if it can change your life, and this is the only way you can do it, then go ahead and do it. Feel all those things way ahead so that by the time you're coming to graduate, you already know that at least you have 470 points, which is usually the, like the cutoff for most of the provinces. Make sure that you are not very far from 470. If your father... If your father, father from 470, further than 10 points, then you're playing in the red zone. Don't be further than five points. Even five points is risky because nobody is going to take you. Unless, the, unless during COVID time, they try to lower 470 a little bit. During COVID, consider, uh, consider the, the draws that were done before COVID during COVID and after COVID. Before COVID, they were always very high, 476. During, during COVID, we have seen them take 471. After COVID, when the things become stable and everybody get immunized, maybe they are going to shoot. So always be safe. Play with CRS core to always make sure that you're living in the safe zone. That is very important. You are age, you are not growing younger. Most of these provinces, remember, they are looking at age. They always tell you above 45 years, most of them above 45 years, you, can, you cannot get any point. You can apply. They say you can apply for provincial nominations, but you are not going to earn any point. So in case you came to Canada when you were 43 years or, or 44, then it means by the time you are graduating, you are above 45 years. Consider all these things. Okay? Yeah? Remember, they are going to look at your experience during your study, the job that you used to work during these 20 hours. They are going to consider the skills that you attained, not the skills that you attained. Yeah, the, the, the experience that you attained during your study time. Make sure that you, of course, you are, you are working in a place that those skills will help you. Don't just go work anywhere that you know. These skills, they're not going to help me towards applying for my PR. Be very particular when you're looking for a job as, a, as an international student. Yeah? And also skilled, uh, skilled experience. Now, after you graduate, consider which jobs you're going to take. Don't be too desperate to take any, for, any type of a job that comes your way. Make sure that you're choosy. Choose the, the, the skills because you'll be looking at what is going to happen after my, after, I mean, when I get to a point of applying for my PR, I'll need to have attained skills that will help me towards my PR application. Yeah. 
So look at other provinces. Start thinking if, if I'm living in Ontario and I see in Nova Scotia, it is easier for me to get permanent resident. Is it fair or is it wiser for me after graduation, I move to Nova Scotia or to Manitoba or to Newfoundland and then I find a job there and then it's going to be easier for me to get the PR. This is not the time to choose saying that this province is colder. I don't know, this, this province is remote. There's no province that is remote in Canada, but don't be too choosy. Oh, keep your eyes open. That is my point. Okay? <laughs> that is it for international students. And always keep in touch with me. Keep in touch when you're here so that we can always encourage each other. It's not easy for anybody, not even for us. Life is not easy for anybody. But God has created human beings so that they can help each other. If you find that you're living as a human being and you're not helping anyone, then you are, you are not worth living. I'm sorry. Yeah, because God had a reason for creating human beings to interact with each other. Make sure that you're helping a life every day. So if you come to Canada and you need my help, remember I'm not an immigration agent, but I can always advise you as a friend you know, based on my experience, based on what I have researched. Thank you so much and God bless you. Remember to subscribe. Bye-bye.